He's definitely recovered from where he was in 2012. He's popular, he's got the potential of, of being a leadership contender in the future, which is something we could never have imagined two years ago. His fortune seemed tied to the economy. When the economy was going nowhere, the same was true for him. His um, omni-shambolic budget a couple of years ago seemed to, as if it was going to bury his reputation forever. But now the economy is booming, so is his political fortunes. I think this experience of government has taught him what works and what doesn't. What works is genuinely bold, radical, conservative reforms. What doesn't is trying to split the difference with the Labour Party, which he's been trying to do, in my opinion, for far too long. I think we're seeing an, an emerging, evolving George Osborne. I'm not quite sure we've settled yet. George Osborne always would have you believe that he really believed what you did, except the time would come for this. So, you know, we're going to get the recovery back and then we're going to do all these tax-cutting things. So give me conservatism, oh Lord, but not yet. I mean, that was generally his vibe. Um, now his timetable is accelerating. He's coming up with, and the extracts of his speech, James quotes, lend themselves to a sort of mission accomplished narrative. You can imagine him at the next election going off to be foreign secretary, um, as James has already suggested. So I think when I um, you know, read the transcript, I thought to myself, well, here we have George Osborne preparing for two jobs. The first is foreign secretary this time next year, and the second is David Cameron's job in 2018. That there, there might be some advantage in getting onto a team Osborne now, but the thing He's good to his friends, isn't he, Osborne? He is, and he's dreadful to his enemies. Getting a grudge from George Osborne is one of the worst things that can happen to your political career. I mean, Andrea Leadsom has only just been promoted after her comments about the libel scandal, which was two years ago, and that was very much against George's wishes that she got into the Treasury. There's also a great theory going around right now that Sajid Javid, who Osborne, you know, was a great friend of, being promoted to the Cabinet. Now, will Sajid Javid stand against George Osborne in 2018? Now, there's one theory that he will do this, but he'll do it only to split the Boris vote. I know one senior Osborne supporter who is ecstatic, teasing all the Javid fans, saying you're going to have to choose between Javid and Boris. Ha ha ha, how do you like that? With Osborne is sailing to victory. The other theory is that Javid will basically run on a joint ticket with Osborne, and that Javid is hoovering up the Tories who can bring themselves to support Osborne, but between the two of them, they can get the sort of support. Now, we're talking about an election that may or may not happen in three years' time, but it's amazing how many of these MPs play mental chess, isn't it? They sit there and plan the next five years. And George Osborne is the greatest mental chess player in Westminster. If that game is played, it probably will be one that he wins.